5e is not a good system for a Dark Souls TTRPG. Yep, I said it. All of these forum and article and Facebook D&D group posts about, who, how do I make dungeons in Dark Souls? Which all boils down to a bunch of people saying, oh, just reskin the monsters into Dark Souls monsters and make them harder. Oh, 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 XP is uh, currency now and you lose it when you die and you, you, you should kill your players a lot. That doesn't make Dark Souls 5e, it just makes mean D&D. Dark Souls, a series that I hold near and dear to my heart, is more than just the hard game. It's about choosing the right gear and magic and equipped items. It's about completely open progression. It's about stamina management in combat that focuses heavily on dodging, parrying, and blocking. For 5e to become Dark Souls would take some pretty drastic changes to the mechanics of the system. And that is what Steamforged Games has claimed to do with their upcoming official Dark Souls 5e book. Fun fact, that is also something that I tried to do in my unreleased, unofficial Dark Souls 5e homebrew. It was in the early days of this channel, and you might still find remnants of me hinting about it on Twitter and maybe even my Patreon. Are you guys sing the Patreon song for this? Patron song. Patron song. These are my patrons. Won't you sing along to my patrons? These are my patrons. Okay. So yeah, in the early days of this channel, I had the idea to do a series of homebrewing D&D &D into popular video game franchises that I liked. And Dark Souls was going to be the first. But after months of working on it on and off, um, I had changed so much about the system and there was so much balancing I felt like I would have to do that I just dropped it because I was having a lot more fun teaching people how to play new TTRPGs that I like a lot more than 5e. But hey, if Steamforge wants to take a crack at it, I'll be happy to compare notes with what I tried to do and also just see if what they're doing sounds like it'll actually be Dark Souls. Here's just their teaser thing. The teaser video is uh, nothing. It's a bonfire with dice floating around it. You can kind of see them here. Look, look the dice. Um, but yeah, they made it. Roll your dice beside the bonfire. It's Dark Souls TTRPG. Brave the crumbling. I'm a voice actor. Here, let. <clears throat> Brave the crumbling ruins of Lothric. Powered by fifth edition rules and enriched with unique Dark Souls mechanics. Dark Souls, the role-playing game, draws on the deep lore and award-winning gameplay of the desolate video games to create a unique role-playing experience. Inside the hardback core book is everything you need to create gripping role-playing campaigns set in the sinister Dark Souls universe. That's a bad reading. In this forbidding land of shadow and flame, Hollows, demons, and creatures abound. Creatures? What? Why are you at? Uh, hollows, demons, stuff. Prepare to die again and again. Uh, every game is a challenge. Progress is hard won. You may die over and over. Yeah, so they're going to keep the dying and rebirth mechanic. Obviously, that only makes sense. Um, and we're going to talk about this. You can spend health to change your fate stuff because that made me laugh. Um, it, we're we're going to get to it. Um, 10 new character classes inspired by the video game, so, see, now, you, normally I speak, so I'm not projecting right at the microphone, so you might get some plosive popping. It's not, th this booth is not designed. Unlikely allies, you're not alone, as well as your fellow role players. A whole host of familiar faces from the video game stand ready to assist you. Engage in jolly cooperation to vanquish your foes. So I guess you can summon NPCs, which... Fine. Powerful magics. Eviscerate your foes and empower your allies with a brand new magic system, including potent pyromancies, spellbinding sorceries, and marvelous miracles. <laughs> okay. Take on a host of formidable foes from the Dark Souls universe with the Bestiary, a whole section brimming with deadly enemies just waiting to burst from the pages. I want to look first at character creation. My belief was when I was trying to design my homebrew of the system, I got rid of classes. 
I tried to make it as real to Dark Souls as possible, which was I tried to focus on um, basically making level ups, just putting new points into your skill or not skills, attributes. Those attributes determined what weapons and equipment and stuff and attunements, spells that you could attune, you know. It determined what you could wear and all the abilities and stuff like that was tied to your equipment and the spells and stuff. You know, kind of like in this game I've heard of. But in here, what we get is, you know, and yes, there are classes in Dark Souls. There are. But they're just starting stats and equipment. That's all the class in Dark Soul is, because you could start as a sorcerer to just start with a little magic and then just constantly put all of your points into strength and by the end not be using spells at all. You're just blowing your way through because you progress however you want. You put your stat points wherever you gather your item, gather, gather your items and just build your own character, whatever you want. It's never, uh, exploring the world of Dark Souls is never an easy task. Every step takes you deeper into danger and closer to losing yourself entirely. But who are you? So you got Origin. Dark Souls role-playing game first helps you choose or create a series of fragments from your past as well as the motivation to keep you going as you're torn from restful death time and time again. These, along with your ideas about who your character is and was, form your character concept. Rather than rolling for attributes in Dark Souls the role-playing game, you select one of four origins. The Brute, the Fencer, the Jack of All Trades, and the Caster. These provide your base statistics as well as some other surprises which we'll save for another time. As I'm recording this, and maybe I might get it out today, I'm gonna work hard at it, but Pre-orders for this are tomorrow, and if I'm going to pre-order, I would like to know more now. But then after that, once you've established your origin, you select one of ten iconic Dark Souls character classes. And they go over, we know, the uh, mercenary, assassin, whatever. And I won't go over all of them because we don't need to, but it just basically describes them and mentions like, oh, get them and some of their awesome abilities, which makes me think that this is just... And I mean, it makes sense, it's 5e character classes, because the way that I did it, where you're just buying your stat points and stuff, meant expanding the stat point range and refiguring, like, it meant refiguring out a ton of stuff, which is why I say it didn't feel like 5e by the time I got to a certain point of homebrewing this. It just doesn't work. It's also so hot in here. Oh my god. But yeah, so it sounds like these will be like classes, which makes the deprived seem interesting, I guess. Um, and yeah, you could say that multi-classing is kind of like the leveling up in Dark Souls, but not really. You're still tying abilities and all that to classes instead of like the equipment and your stats, and that's kind of it. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I've made myself clear. I don't like it, but let's really get into it. The first look at new mechanics. There's some good in here, and I think some some interesting. But it's not the 5e you might be used to. <laughs> Over many months and conversations that went into the night, we cut 5e to ribbons before reanimating it by the bonfire. Dark Souls has always been close to our hearts. Our aim was to keep what felt most familiar and intuitive about the 5e system and give it a new life altogether with signature Dark Souls mechanics that would capture the authentic spirit of the video game. Without giving away the detail of every new mechanic in the game, because why would you want to know so much about a game you're going to pre-purchase, um, the sneak peeks below should give you some insight to how we've brought this new tabletop role-playing world to life. Or on death. Now here is the main thing they talk about, and I'm probably gonna have the most to say about this. Position. This is mechanically the biggest change Dark Souls, a role-playing game. This is mechanically the biggest change Dark Souls. This is mechanically the biggest change Dark Souls, the role-playing game to the standard 5e rule set. The, take out the Dark Souls part. It's just this is mechanically the biggest change to the standard 5e rule set. You can't... Don't put the title there. God. This is your big press release for a big deal game? Shame on you. 
In Dark Souls, you have health and you have stamina. Health measures how close you are to death, and stamina tracks the energy you're expending on making attacks. Conserving both is essential to success. And it's good that they recognize that that's not something 5e does, because it's very integral to Dark Souls. Now, 5e doesn't have anything resembling stamina, and introducing it would require an awful lot of bookkeeping for players and game masters alike. Instead, we decided to amalgamate the two into a single value. We call it position. Position measures your character's health, but it's also a resource you can spend to tweak a dice roll or to use special abilities gained from your character, class, or equipment. Position goes up gradually as you increase in level, but it's always finite and generated randomly at the start of battle. Using it allows you to do some pretty amazing stuff, but it also makes you vulnerable. Spending it is a big decision, and mastering its use is extremely difficult, just as it should be. Oh, and you're not the only ones with position either. Yes, I agree. There needs to be something with managing, you know, stamina, how that works within the game. Their solution is to steal from the cipher system. <laughs> it is, it's the cipher system. Whoop, here you go. Here you go, just watch, watch my Cypher System video and see. No, the Cypher System has the stats that are also your health, that are also the pools of points you spend on tweaking your dice rolls and using abilities. So <laughs> they're very much taking that. It's a mechanic that I like a lot from that. I don't know how I feel about it in Dark Souls. I do like there being that give and take, but it means that a lot of like, it. <sighs> It still doesn't feel like Dark Souls to me, necessarily. It feels strategic and maybe a little more hardcore, which Dark Souls is all about, but that really feels like simplifying it a little too much. So, what did I do? The way I tackled this was to rework 5e to be kind of more like Pathfinder, but also way different in its own regard. My thought was that stamina would kind of be replaced by the number of actions that you got in a turn. Stay with me on this. Basically, wearing lighter armor gives you more actions per turn. Heavier armor takes away some actions. Also, reworking defense completely, because Dark Souls isn't just about avoiding being hit. It's about blocking, it's about parrying and dodging, and all three of those have benefits. Parrying is the hardest to accomplish, but lets you strike back with a critical hit. Dodging is pretty mid-level, you know, you jump and dodge out of the way, but you have to time it right. Blocking is the easiest, but usually means that uh, some damage is kind of plowing through and chipping away at your health. So they all have these kind of give and take advantages, and I thought they should all be incorporated in to 5e. So basically I thought, Every character gets like multiple actions per turn. Yes, like Pathfinder where you get three actions in a turn, but it can vary depending on your stamina and your equipment. And defense rolls wouldn't be this static AC number. It would be something that you would have to roll. So when an enemy attacks you, you would choose which of those you want to do. But each one has this like base difficulty where parrying, so you roll your parry. Parry is by default, at disadvantage. Dodging is just kind of standard easy to do, and blocking is standard at advantage. However, if you have actions left over from your turn which you would want to try and conserve them probably, you can spend those actions to boost each of those different moves. So like, if you spend an action on parry, suddenly it goes from being at disadvantage to being standard. If you can spend two actions on it, you can bring it from standard up to at advantage, and so on. And even potentially, I think I thought you could take it to like double advantage where you had rolled three dice and take the best or four or whatever, you know? This, this was kind of my best thought to that because then you're judging on your turn, hey, how many of my actions do I want to spend swinging and attacking with my weapons? And how many of those actions do I want to save in order to survive? Much like in Dark Souls where when you go up and you have an opening and you start attacking an enemy, if you burn through all of your stamina, when that enemy goes to hit you, you're not gonna have enough stamina to effectively do much of anything. Uh, it's gonna be a heck of a lot harder, and your timing is gonna be off for parrying, and all of that kind of stuff. Was it perfect? Do I have everything figured out? 
No! But I still had health. Health was still a number that was there, but I thought of having a lot less of it. And so there were just not this big growing number problem, but just, uh, I don't know. And armor was going to reduce damage from different types by different amounts. It wasn't going to be the straight up resistance where it's just cut in half. If you wore like big bulky heavy armor, it might reduce physical damage by four points, but you know, increase lightning by one or whatever. That's why I said it would take so long to balance because each piece of armor would have different resistance stats and different effects on your number of moves. Encumbrance, that I forgot to say, but the number of items you carry. You don't want to carry a million things around because then your encumbrance is heavy and the difference encumbrance. This is why I got so confusing because there's so many little things that really make Dark Souls Dark Souls that a video game is just doing behind the scenes with all of its code and you can't do that in a ttrbg you have to do it like this i had it kind of figured out and maybe from the rambling you're hearing from me you can better figure it out but let's move on for now it's so hot in here oh yeah let's talk about this part position goes up gradually as you increase in level but it's always finite and generated randomly at the start of battle what a weird choice what an absolutely weird choice. It kind of sounds like an integration of initiative and health and this stam their idea of a stamina mechanic. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Why, why is it generated randomly at the start of battle, but also grows as you level? Like, it basically sounds like you get to roll for position and you have... A proficiency bonus in it as you level up. I don't know. That's interesting. I think it's an interesting mechanic that doesn't necessarily feel like Dark Souls in any appreciable way, but it's a neat mechanic. Whether or not you think that's Dark Souls, I'd love to hear. Bloodied. But this just boils down to when an enemy gets to a certain... They lose a certain amount of position. Um that they become more dangerous. This is something that I've just done in D&D for a long time. This is nothing new to me, but I think it's a good concept. There are Dark Souls bosses that have phase twos and all that stuff. So, I mean, there are a lot of games that have that, but still, why not incorporate it into this? I think it's a solid idea. Their magic system. They're basically just replacing it with the Dark Souls magic system, which makes sense. Like the old, the original. Dark Souls magic system where you would attune a spell and it has so many uses and when you're not a uses until you sit at a bonfire I think that's fine I think that's good it should be strategic in your use of that stuff it's not that different from D&D so that's gone entirely it's a, a new flexible system yeah you trade in spells in and out into your attunement slots and choose what you get to use and you have limited number of uses for each of those guys that's not that different from from <laughs> From D and D, that's a wizard. You just described a wizard or like a cleric preparing spells. But as a wizard, you don't necessarily say I'm preparing fireball and I get four fireball. So it's changing it, and I think it's changing it in a very Dark Soulsian way. That is essentially what I would have done. Oh, oh yeah, and some of your spells require position as well, which I get. Some of the spells in Dark Souls take a while to cast. And so since they're saying that position is your health plus your initiative plus your stamina, I guess it makes sense to have to expend some of that for these spells, but does it? <laughs> it's a weird solution to me. My solution of making characters who can have a whole bunch of extra actions and blah, 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 blah is pretty weird too. That's why I say it's a weird system to try and make 5e work for. It requires a lot of tweaks that I'm... I'm not sure that this is a tweak to make it happen, but I'm, you know, I, th there should be a discussion. We need to figure this out. So yeah, death and rebir rebirth. Uh, there are no death saves. If you hit zero position, you're dead. And you'll respawn at the bonfire, of course. Uh, you'll have lost all your collected souls. Yep, sorry, leveling up might take a bit longer. And there's a significant risk you'll lose part of yourself. That brings us to one of the major themes in Dark Souls, uh, the, gra uh, the gradual erosion of humanity. You'll begin your campaign with a character concept. Each time you die, you risk parts of yourself being whittled away, leaving you a husk, a mindless hollow. Neat. It sounds like 
they're trying to make that hollowing effect more than just like a little mechanic with some hidden items. Like if you go completely hollow in Dark Souls 3, you can get free level ups and some secret items and a secret ending. It sounds like they're trying to make that the grander thing that you need to worry about. Because in D&D, death is the thing you have to worry about. If your character dies, your character's gone unless you get resurrected. And I got a whole video about how dumb that is or also cool and make it cool. Go watch my video. But in this, Dark Souls, when dying and resurrection is such a common thing, you do want something that adds this kind of growing tension to it. And adding this hollowing effect is a good choice. It's in theme with Dark Souls. It gives you something to worry about. I just, I wonder how it's going to affect the play long term. Is it going to be like in Dark Souls 1 where the more times you die, or is that Dark Souls 2? I can't remember. Now. It, it, I haven't played them in a while, but your health bar gradually bip, 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 gets smaller each time you die. I would, I would imagine there are going to be more mechanical effects to that, and that sounds great. This next part, I don't know. And a quick note, if during a combat half of your party dies, then the whole party fails and wakes up at a bonfire soulless and needing to start all over again. I get what they're going for. I do. They want the feel of if the summoner dies, then the summoned, you know, cohorts fade away from that world. But obviously they're trying to make a game where you're all in one world because I don't think anyone wants to play the tabletop role-playing game where you and your two friends have to go through and beat the same boss three times in a TTRPG so that you all have it completed and then you can all try and put down marks and find each other again. It sounds like everyone's going to be part of the same world and more of like a linked thing somehow. And so this, oh, if half of your party dies, then the whole party fails thing is trying to make up for that, oh, if the person who summons other players to help them, if that person dies, the link to that world is severed and the other players go back. Except in that case, those other players don't lose all of their souls too. This seems really harsh. I don't know that I'd play with that rule where it's like, hey, if the boss is almost beat with like a smidge of health left, if I've got three people, or let's say four people, four people, so I got a group of four, fighting a boss and they are kicking its butt and it's down to the last little smidge of its health and two of the players die and I just go womp womp and the other it's the next player's turn they're like I'm ready to take the hit I'll take this thing down it's like nope half the party died go back I don't think that's a game mechanic that has to be brought over now it sucks too though for the players who died not getting that experience like I and losing their souls, like, that's a weird balance. That's a thing that I struggled with when I was trying to homebrew this. I'm like, how do I make this feel good? How do I make the repetition of all this feel good in a Dark Souls tabletop game? Because part of Dark Souls is grinding and dying over and over again in the same area against enemies sometimes. And it's a weird translation to make. And I don't like this answer. If you think that's a good idea, tell me in the comments. I just, I struggle in my GM brain to think of how I would handle running this, taking a victory away from my players because half of them are dead. Like I said, I just probably wouldn't play with that rule. Cause I, I, I don't know. But then those players miss out on that, on all those souls. And so it's like, oh, do we run it again in your world to get the souls? <laughs> I don't know. It's dumb. And that's all they say. That's all they, they give. I think they've done some good things here. I think positioning is a good mechanic for other games. I think it works great in Cypher. I love using it in Cypher when they did it, but I don't know that it feels very Dark Souls-y necessarily, aside from the fact that it can be a little more risk and reward. But I don't think it really solves the feel of having stamina management and all that and having, you know, lighter armor, making you more nimble and this. There's a lot I think that would go into balancing such a thing. And like I said, I think that, I think that the ideas I had made a system that maybe felt a little more like Dark Souls, but was maybe a little too complex in some areas and really didn't feel that much like 5e, felt more like Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So I don't know that my idea was necessarily a success. 
but I don't know that their idea is either. 5e is a very fun system for a lot of people. It's not my favorite, but I still enjoy it. But I don't think that just because it is a fantasy world with magic and dragons and this and that, that it necessarily translates into Dark Souls without significantly more drastic changes than I think Steamforged Games is willing to make. People want it to feel like 5e, people are familiar with it, and that's great. It's a great system. And if you're happy with this and the changes that they make, and it still feels enough like 5e so that you're comfortable with it, I think you definitely should try it out, check it out, play it. It'll probably still be very, very fun. I just don't know that it's the most Dark Souls that a TTRPG could feel with what they're willing to change. I am most interested to hear what all of you have to say. I want this to be a conversation, and so I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you hope that Steamforge does with this official Dark Souls TTRPG? What do you wish that they had done different? What do you think about the ideas that I incoherently rambled out because I should always have a script? The only part of this that I scripted was the very beginning part, and I didn't even fully follow along with that because I wanted to try and have eye contact with the camera. It was a mess. All of these things are a mess. I shouldn't be allowed to go without a script, but there it is. You got just my fresh opinions and rambling. I hope I can cut this down to something better, but I've been talking for 40 minutes and my throat is th so dry and this booth is so goddamn hot. <laughs> um, follow my Twitter, follow my Patreon. The Patreon, yeah, you get good stuff. You can join, I got a Discord server. Hop on the Discord server and ask me questions and debate me there and call me names. I, um, 